Well, joining me now is Hugh Bennett, deputy editor of the website Brexit Central, to digest what has been a very busy week. In, in Laura Koonsberg's report there, she was saying not a time for celebration for Theresa May. Do you think the champagne remains on ice? Well, I think, obviously, I think the UK has probably given away more than it wanted to in this stage of negotiations, but it's very good that we are actually moving on. I think there's been a lot of arbitrary conditions set so far. It's really felt more like jumping through hoops than a real genuine negotiation because of the way that the EU has structured the talks. So I think you know, there'll be a sigh of relief on all sides, really, that we can actually get on with the important business of talking about trade and the future relationship. But it seems that there's already some kind of tension, even in phase two, because Theresa May has said, right, let's crack on, talk trade. And, and then we've heard from Juncker that, well, we can't really start any of that in earnest until March. So straight away, we're into this slight uh, tension between the two positions. Yeah. Well, I think the truth is that neither side is really ready to talk about trade at the moment. Obviously, where, the way the EU negotiates, they, um, they draw up a mandate between the European, European member state leaders. They, want, they decide what... Um, what guidelines are going to set out to actually give Michel Barnier the, the mandate to negotiate. And on the UK side, really, Theresa May still has to make this decision. Are we going to continue to be aligned very closely to EU rules, or are we going to actually strike out on our own, give ourselves the power to strike comprehensive trade deals, you know, this Norway light or Canada plus mm. situation that's been talking, uh, that people have been talking about. So I think May needs to make that decision, and I think European leaders actually also need some time to gather their, mm. gather their thoughts on the issue. So that's why they're talks aren't starting immediately. Uh, and of course, Theresa May, as she mulls all of this over, is under increasing pressure, one might say, and has been for the last six months from within her own party. So many people want the Prime Minister's ear. We've seen this defeat this week. How bruised, if at all, has that left her, do you think? Well, I think it's, it's easy to overestimate you know, the significance of the defeat. Uh, I think it, it, it's a political defeat. I don't think it really changes the dynamic in the negotiations that much. Um, I think when you look at the people behind the defeat, you look at the, the rebels, uh, Anna Subri, Dominic Grieve, Ken Clark, you know, these are all people that have been very committed to, to stop Brexit, to obstruct it in every way possible so far. So I think you know, they, they talk about parliamentary sovereignty. I think it's really just part of a, you know, it's part of a, a more concerted movement just to make Brexit that little bit more difficult mm -hmm. for the Prime Minister. I mean, you only have to look at the reactions of Lord Adonis, you know, celebrating it as the first step in, in stopping Brexit. So I think... You know, their, their motives are one thing, but I don't think it actually changes the, you know, the substance of, of the negotiations. Ultimately, she was going to have to do that anyway as part of the deal. But does it change the way she's viewed by the other EU leaders when there's so much uh, argy-bargy, one might say, back at home? Well, I think it, it does make it more difficult because they don't know whether... If they, they agree a deal with her and then she has to go back to the UK and you know, will people in Parliament then cause trouble? Will they have to go back to the deal, uh, go back to the negotiating table? I think you've had various EU leaders saying, you know, if the UK Parliament votes to reject it, you know, we're not going to reopen negotiations again. You know, you'll get the same deal again or you'll have to leave with no deal. So I think you know, the rebels who are hoping it'll be a way to stop Brexit will be disappointed, I think.